Okay, what is the upcoming year going to bring? People wondering. Now, last video segment, I said I was going to talk about current events of the world of, you know, the upcoming year, stuff like that, things going on in general. Like I just told you, uh, in love relationships, for those who watched it or for those who didn't, is I just recently favorited um, I favorited two videos trying to get it together, trying to get it in gear. I recently favorited two videos and one was about Texas River or Lake turning into blood and the other one was a collection of articles that an individual recorded on a uh, video segment about blooded lakes and rivers in different regions of the world. So that right there is modern day prophecy. Of course, the super moon, which I remember seeing myself driving home from work, where the moon was extremely close to the earth and it looked orange to me. To others, it looked red. To me, it looked orange. And I was like, what in the world color moon is that? So another thing about prophecy. So, you know, as far as biblical prophecy, that's the latest going on. Well, one of the latest as far as with the bloody lakes and the bloody rivers. I saw the riots all over the world. You know, recently the UK uh, got people rioting over there. In Britain, they had riots with uh, the Iranians, protesters. Well, the, Iran, the Iranians uh, came over to Britain and started tearing down British flags and putting up Iranian flags. Uh, you, you got riots and chaos all over the world. Right here in America, like I said, protesters, the Occupy Wall Street, you still got tea parties. They ain't went nowhere. They just changed the subject. There's so much going on at one time that the media can't cover all at once. And they're trying to get as much as they can. So they got a whole lot of stories lined up back to back. they just trying to pick out which one more relevant, which one more important. So uh, as far as with the radicals, uh, trying to take out Obama that still stands. You still got hate groups who want Obama out of office. That ain't went nowhere. Like I said, the media just ain't covering it. So I guess the spiritual media has it covered through prophecy. But yeah, but I said they ain't went nowhere. And as far as the upcoming year, a lot because a lot of people a lot of people, you know, in the scripture in Matthew 24, or really 25, it, uh, or is it 25? Well, yeah, actually around 25, 26, or the end, I know 25, I just read about the 10 foolish virgins. So 26, I believe the beginning of verse, the starting verses in 26, where Jesus speaks, nobody knows the day nor the hour. Only the father knows, not even the son. So by 2012, a lot of people have this great fear. It's something which it is. It is. It's something great and drastic going to happen in 2012. Because the father sees a lot of people are, you know, geared up for 2012. Like, what I mean geared up is like in this brace themselves mode. It's something to happen. He going to use that as an opportunity to send a message to people. He's going to use it as an opportunity because if a lot of people feel something going to happen and nothing don't happen, then they're going to get back loose again and be back heathens. So this is an opportunity for him to, you know, give another warning, a great significant warning. And he already, he already given great significant warnings with the bloody lakes, uh, bloody lakes and rivers with the people riding all over the place, the East Coast earthquake, uh, Japan going under, uh, China in the earthquake, you know, uh, Chile, Malaysia, etc. All these, Spain going under, having issues, Greece and their riders, uh, Europe having a financial crisis and all this. All this stuff going on is already a lot of significant signs. If you look at the news headlines, God is speaking through news headlines. Just recently, I was up in a break room at my job, and I came, sat down, and I looked up, and there was the news on, and the first thing I saw was labor pains. It said labor pains as the headlines. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, 
that right there is another sign. At first, I saw a whole lot on the headlines, sign of the times. I seen that on headlines on the news, I don't know how many times. I done lost count, sign of the times, sign of the times. Kept seeing it as the headlines. Now the reason when I saw was labor pains. Now what I mean about labor pains is that in Matthew 24, Jesus said that the sign of the times would be like labor pains of a woman. And I think that's like 24 around verse 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, something like that. He said it would be like labor pains of a woman, of course, contractions. When a woman is pregnant, she has contractions. just like many earthquakes in her stomach, meaning that's the beginning. But Jesus also said in Matthew 24 that around verse 10 or 12, something like that, that until the gospel is preached to all the nations of the world, then the end shall come. So first, the nations have an opportunity to receive me, have an opportunity to know me, and then after that, that's when it's going to pretty much get shut down. And as you can see, the chaos and the stuff all over the world, the current events, all these things happening is the reality that it's no fairy tale. This book is no fairy tale. It's not fiction on whatsoever. So that's what's going on with as far as modern day prophecy and current events. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, uh, let me see, was... Uh, Oh, China. Okay, now, remember I spoke on Prophecy 2010 through 13 about the Great War. Okay, uh, open your eyes, time to take Eve and release on this. And because, okay, China, because America's in great debt to China, America's in great debt to China, and America's already fighting about six wars, it seems like. This country is an industrial country, and this country is generated out war. We got so much machinery in America, so much machinery, and the oil is like the bloodline of this country. Oil is the bloodline, and the blood pressure low in America. So when the blood pressure low, you're on the verge of having a stroke or going to cardiac arrest when your blood pressure is low. So going into cardiac arrest is going into recession not just because of debt but by oil being low and fighting all these different wars going into recession the cardiac arrest for this country is spending all the money for the war because the reason that health care got affected is because of the war you got all these audience of registered nurses going overseas you that, that costs money you know them going overseas paying out to help aid the troops, help support the troops. You got medical supplies being shipped overseas. That costs money. You got to constantly send medical supplies to help aid the troops, help support them. Then you have artillery. Artillery is weaponry. Sending artillery overseas because, of course, them shooting missiles and all, I don't know how many years, almost eight years, five years, I lost track how long this war been going on. You got eight years of shipping overseas artillery, or shipping artillery overseas, that costs money. The plane, the plane comes over to a, a specific location of perimeters, longitude, latitude, whatever you want to call it, overseas. They drop off the artillery, it's this truck, this armor truck, loads it up, and they drive out in the middle of the desert to drop off the artillery, then the troops come in, load up on their RVs, they harm us or whatnot, and then they drive off and go back to their positions. That costs money. Constantly having to ship artillery overseas to keep the ammunition of the uh, troops supplied, to keep the ammunition full. That costs money. So the medical supplies, shipping them overseas, audience overseas, working, making extra money. Uh, artillery sitting at overseas, making extra money. That costs a lot of money. Missiles, individual missiles themselves can cost up to thousands or in the millions. A one individual missile. So that's a lot of money. So look at it this way. Every time they launch a powerful missile, they launching a million dollars or five million dollars. However much it costs to make that missile, that's how much they launch it. 
So when they shoot that off, they shooting off five million. So this five million getting shot off. This five million getting shot off. This five million getting shot off. Boosh, boo. Five million over here, five million over there, five million over there. Then they have to remanufacture and make more missiles. So that costs money. So you see what caused the deficit was really hurting this country, really put a dent in this country, is the war. Five million dollar missiles getting shot. You throwing five million dollars up in the air and watching five million dollars explode right before your very eyes. So the remanufacturing of missiles shooting them five million dollar missiles that cost money shipping them shipping artillery overseas that cost money shipping medical supplies overseas that cost money paying the ins trying to make sure that they paychecks are you know up to date or keeping them on payroll you know the payroll of the ins that cost money so all that costs a whole lot of money in war that's one reason that knocked the big hole in this country number two is loan sharks, as they call, where of course a lot of people get loans who can't really afford to pay a loan back. People getting approved of loans they really can't afford to pay them back, so that's what caused another great deficit in this country. A lot of people getting loans they know they can't afford it. The lender know they can't afford it, but they still give it to them anyways, only to make commission. So, okay, we done made commission. We done got this person to get this loan. I done made commission. I done made myself look good. But when that person can't afford to pay that loan back, they probably end up filing bankruptcy and whatnot. Now the company is stuck with a debt. They stuck with a debt. They got to figure out how to reimburse themselves because they was depending on the borrower, the borrower to reimburse them. But since the borrower couldn't afford to pay them back, then we stuck with the debt. So that's money that they didn't lend it out and they didn't lost majority and they got to figure out how to gain most of that back. So that's another thing that caused deficit as well in this country. Uh, pre-approved credit cards. When people received in the mailbox, you pre-approved. A lot of people falling into the traps of pre-approved credit cards. A lot of people getting desperate and can't avoid the temptation of applying for a credit card and they end up getting them pre-approved credit cards that once again no one can't pay back and that's caused a deficit as well because them people sending out pre-approved credit cards to people knowing that they really not pre-approved knowing they really can't afford you know this credit card but just so they can make commission so them they doing it just to make commission and that also caused a deficit as well as giving credit cards out of people who can't afford to pay them back just as well as giving loans out of people who can't afford to pay them back. And okay, breathe now. Okay, but um, <clears throat> the other thing was okay, China. That was the other thing I was going to uh, talk about because America. I was finna talk about China, but it ended up, you know, going around the track. Because America owes China so much money, America is gonna have no other choice, like I said, but to go to war with China. That's the only way America could avoid the debt of China. That's the only way. Saudi Arabia as well, because remember Bush had ties with Saudi Arabia, but mostly China. America been doing business with China like man. Ever since the um, the Hiroshima, ever since the Hiroshima, ever since Pearl Harbor and the Hiroshima, America been doing business with China. Ever since, but really Pearl Harbor, you know, making it some uh, it was a form of diplomacy without the Pearl Harbor because they've been dropping the bombs and all that. So it came to a reason, came to a form of diplomacy, been doing business ever since. After that. <clears throat> Like I said, America been doing business with China for quite some time. Like I said, majority of the products over here you see made in China because of cheap work labor, a cheap workforce labor overseas. So that's been going on for quite some time. The whole cheap workforce labor. It just now it's a lot more imperative since this country, the economy is staggering and sinking, and these big businesses are trying to save their country, their companies by going overseas. So if it's costing them more money 
on the upkeep of their business that costs less money on the upkeep of their business overseas, then of course they're gonna go overseas. Matter of fact, I had a I had a uh, I had a sales paper from Japan or China where they were selling a whole lot of buildings for dirt cheap. I mean big beautiful buildings. I ain't talking about a yen in dollars. Big beautiful buildings. It, I mean I seen buildings for like ten grand. Not leasing you can purchase for like ten grand, fifteen thousand. I seen one for like eight thousand. Big beautiful buildings, commercial of property. Commercial property. Commercial lots. Not for leasing, for businesses. And when I saw that, I wish I kept it. I think I, I threw it away somewhere. When I saw the prices up on those businesses or those commercial lots, I was thinking to myself, if I was a businessman, I would go over there too. I mean, here I am paying out so much money in America leasing this property when I can purchase the property overseas. They had the property up for purchase. So I can go pay 10 grand. This is my property. It's my business. Of course, just pay taxes on it. Property taxes, but other than that, it's my property. I ain't got to pay no lease. I ain't got to rent the own. This is mine. Or, I don't know if in China they do property taxes. You might can actually buy that property where it's actually yours. So when I saw that paper, I was like, if I was a businessman, yeah, I would do the same. Honestly. Here I am paying out over 10 grand a year, leasing this property. But over here overseas, I can purchase the property for what I'm paying a month on lease. Or close to what I'm paying a month to lease it. I can pay one time and own it. And just pay property taxes once a year. And then property taxes, if they do do property taxes over there, I'm sure it's a lot cheaper than over here. So I wish I had the paper to show it to y'all to prove that I'm not making this stuff up. But hey, y'all been watching my channel a while, subscribers, friends. Like I said, stop ours. Y'all not be telling the truth. Otherwise, you won't watch. You won't sit and stay. So hey. So. That right there, you know, like I said, because America owes China so much money doing business with them for so long, that's going to leave them no other choice but to go to war with China. And because China is allies with Russia, if China goes to war, Russia going to go to war with them. We going to join you because we allies. They show on the news all the time. The president of Russia, the president of China always buddy buddy click click together and you know so Gog and Magog and the Bible and the book of Daniel when you read about the four beasts when you read about the two Gog and Magog Gog and Magog is Russia and China okay so Russia China Iran here's where Iran come in at if you remember if you've been paying attention to watch the news and a lot of people ain't too popular with the news and whatnot but I've been more turned in or tuned in ever since I see his prophecy in it and knowing what's going on with world events and seeing God's hand in it. So that's why I've been zooming in on it more. But if you've been paying attention on the news, Iran has been doing a lot of business with China. And I remember, I think it was during a Bush term when the Iranian president or Iran was selling uh, China cheap oil. Yeah, that, that's exactly how it went. Iran was selling China cheap oil, and in return, China was making missiles for Iran. And they was doing their business over there. And Bush, them came in the midst of it, and they Bush didn't like that because China, you know, was doing business with the enemy of America. So they didn't like that. So that's why they went over there, they had the discussions of whatever was going on with China, and that's what led to the whole war in the first place over the oil. What led to the whole war was when uh, the Bush administration found out that Iran was selling cheap oil to China. And 
and selling because, okay, get it together. Iran, Afghan, Iraq, they all tied together. Well, first they were separated fighting. Afghan and Iraq, you know, they was they pretty much neighboring cities or states or whatnot. And Iran, they, like I said, all read from the same book and practice the same religion. So culturally wise, they pretty much alike. But anywho, that's when the Hosan, the uh, Hosan Hussein, Osama Hussein and Osama bin Laden and all do that. You know, that's when that whole conflict was going on with the Bush administration. Okay, trying to get all the facts and put them all together. When the Bush administration found out that China was receiving cheap oil from Iran, from they didn't like the fact China was doing business with their enemy. Okay. So by them not liking the fact China was doing business with their enemy, like, hey, you're supposed to be doing business with us. Why are you helping to aid our enemy or fund our enemy? That's when the Bush administration needed a reason to infiltrate the Mideast. So that's when they were saying weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, and making it seem as if the Mideast was trying to have weapons of mass destruction to aim at America. So they needed a reason or an alibi to infiltrate. And that was their alibi. They, the, that was their first alibi. We need to go over there because they got possible weapons of mass destruction. So they went over there, bombed Afghan, bombed Iraq. Oops, they didn't have weapons of mass destruction. We made a mistake. So then the Bush administration went over there and they decided to reconstruct and rebuild. So when they went over there and decided to reconstruct and rebuild, that's when America was like, okay, what's going on? Why are we rebuilding the country of our enemies? You say they had weapons of mass destruction. We went over there to go to war with them. And now we using money to rebuild their cities? I thought they was our enemy. Why in the world are we? So then, after going over there to rebuild, the troops found the whole lot. They found a whole lot of stash and cash after Hassan Hussein, after he was allegedly hung from, uh, well, forgot what he was hung from, but after he was hung, because we ain't heard no more from him, so some of that they did get him like they said. So after he was hung, they found a whole lot of money, and they looked at it, they looked at killing the leader over in Afghan Iraq as an opportunity to take over their oil. So taking over the oil, okay, we killed the leader. So now we going over here to establish a democracy, alibi number two. Alibi number one was they got weapons of mass destruction, and we going to disarm them of those weapons of mass destruction. Okay, they didn't have weapons of mass destruction, so we reconstructed. Now, why are we reconstructing? Alibi number two is, well, we re reconstructing over here because we made a mistake. And we didn't want to say it publicly we made a mistake because Bush were like, this is going to make me look like I don't know what I'm doing. So it can't just get it to the press release. So we going over here to establish a democracy. So going over here, democracy hasn't been established. Eight years later, a democracy still hasn't been established. Why are we over here now? But of course, it's for the oil. That's why we over here now, because of oil. <laughs> so, now they over here for the oil, and that's what all led to the oil is once they found out that Iran was selling cheap oil to China and the whole weapons of mass destruction, they needed a reason to go over there. Then when they came over there, hey, here's the opportunity to take the oil. So then after Hassan Hussein, that's when Bush tried to go to the Iranian president. If you remember, they were showing it on CNN and through Larry King while they, when they was interviewing Ahmadinejad. And Ahmadinejad and Bush was kind of clashing each other. But Ahmadinejad, he the type of president, he was like, I don't like America. I never did. Please give me a reason to push this button so I can launch a nuke. So when Bush saw that Ahmadinejad was serious about launching a nuke over here to America, he yielded. He fell back. 
he was like, oh, let's leave Iran alone. We don't need to worry about Iran and democracy. We not worried about Iran having weapons of mass destruction. Let's leave them alone. Because Bush knew that president wasn't playing. He was dead serious. You come over here like you invading Iraq and Afghan. We finna push a button. You finna receive a package from us. And you're not going to like it. So that's why he, let's leave out, I'm a demon job alone. Back to Afghan and Iraq, establishing a democracy over there. But conflict fell, you know, it was conflict, like I said, with America and China, with Iran. So because Iran to this day is still doing business with China, Iran would be the third beast. <laughs> Russia, oh, okay, Russia, China, Iran. Because Iran is still doing business with China, and Iran still has nuclear projects and activity going on. They're still doing business with China over there. So by them still doing business with China, they will be the third one to join. China is at war, so China has partnership with Russia. China has partnership with Iran. Who will be the fourth one? Korea. Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un does not like America. So Kim Jong-un sees an opportunity as well to get revenge on America. So he sees an opportunity as well to join in. So what's happening? All Asia going against the West. The East overpowering the West. This pretty much make up Asia. Iran, Russia, China, North Korea. It pretty much makes up Asia. So in Daniel, when it say the four beasts, sound like four to me. <laughs> so right there, that war is going to be inevitable. America ain't going to have no other choice. Because China is dependent on America to pay back the debt. Because you remember, China had an earthquake on a Richter scale of like eight. It was eight or nine. So China had a massive earthquake, what was it, about a year or two ago? And if China had a massive earthquake and they depended on America to pay them back so they can rebuild a country. But if America can't pay them back, how will they rebuild their country? Because they depended on them. Well, we just had a massive earthquake, but America owed us anyway. So once we get the money back from America, we can start rebuilding. When have you heard on the news where America is making some type of contributions to China to try to help China rebuild? You hear about democracy in Libya. You hear about democracy in Afghan, Iraq. You hear about that. You hear about trying to bring liberty back to Libya and all that, but you don't hear America trying to aid their number one partner for how long? <laughs> uh, Asia, China been a partner for how long? You don't hear about that. That's what's going to lead to the Great War. Then you got, of course, the Crusades happening. Like I already spoke, Muslims still slaughtering the Christians and all that. And that's the one Christ going to participate in and all that. That's already on here. It's already posted, already explained it. So just keep me an update on that. So as far as with Obama and all that, it's all part of prophecy. Yeah, they are still going to try to take him out. Yes, they are. But like I said, them radicals or hate groups, you're only going to be pulling a pin on a grenade. You're only going to be detonating the bomb to this country. Because as much as they hate him, they need him because Obama has great support from Muslims. They highly respect him. They know his background predominantly. Uh, Muslim grew up in Indonesia and all fluent in Arabic, fluent in the Quran. So killing him is killing foreign policy policy or killing being allies with the Muslim nation. Remember Obama had spoke that a while ago, talking about being allies with Islam or being allies with the Muslim nation. Trying to rebuild a trust between Muslims and Christians, but that ain't gonna fly. 
I guess I'm gonna leave it at that. Christ for life. <laughs> Peace be unto you. I said it backwards, but y'all know what I mean. Peace be unto you. Christ for life. Reverse or backwards is still correct. I mean, forward or reverse is still correct.